to discover wonders, confront horrors, beautiful new worlds, malevolent dark forces, the beginning of time, the moment of creation. Would we have the courage to see it through? Or would we run for home? There's only one way to find out. Our journey through time and space begins with a single step. At the edge of space, only 60 miles up, just an hour's drive from home. Down there, life continues. The traffic is awful, stocks go on trading, and Star Trek is still showing. When we return home, if we return home, will it be the same? Will we be the same? We have to leave all this behind to dip our toes into the vast dark ocean. On to the moon. Dozens of astronauts have come this way before us. Twelve walked on the moon itself. Just a quarter of a million miles from home. Three days by spacecraft. Barren. Desolate. It's like a deserted battlefield, but oddly familiar. So close, we've barely left home. Neil Armstrong's first footprints. Looks like they were made yesterday. There's no air to change them. They could survive for millions of years. Maybe longer than us. Our time is limited. We need to take our own giant leap. One million miles, five million, twenty million miles. We're far beyond where any human has ever ventured. Out of the darkness, a friendly face. The goddess of love. Venus. The morning star. The evening star. She can welcome the new day in the east. Say good night in the west. A sister to our planet, she's about the same size and gravity as Earth. We should be safe here. But the Venus Express space probe is setting off alarms. It's telling us these dazzling clouds, they're made of deadly sulfuric acid. The atmosphere is choking with carbon dioxide.
Never expected this. Venus is one angry goddess. The air is noxious, the pressure unbearable. And it's hot, approaching 900 degrees. Stick around and we'd be corroded, suffocated, crushed and baked. Nothing can survive here. Not even this Soviet robotic probe. Its heavy armor's been trashed by the extreme atmosphere. So lovely from Earth, up close this goddess is hideous. She's the sister from hell, pockmarked by thousands of volcanoes. All that carbon dioxide is trapping the sun's heat. Venus is burning up, its global warming gone wild. Before it took hold, maybe Venus was beautiful, calm, more like her sister planet Earth. So this could be Earth's future. Where are the twinkling stars? the beautiful spheres gliding through space. Maybe we shouldn't be out here. Maybe we should turn back. But there's something about the sun, something hypnotic, like the Medusa, too terrible to look at, too powerful to resist. Luring us onwards, on, like a moth to a flame. Wait, there's something else, obscured by the sun. It must be Mercury. Get too close to the sun, this is what happens. Temperatures swing wildly here. At night, it's minus 275 degrees. Come midday, it's 800 plus. Burnt, then frozen. The messenger space probe is telling us something strange. For its size, Mercury has a powerful gravitational pull. It's a huge ball of iron covered with a thin veneer of rock, the core of what was once a much larger planet. So where's the rest of it? Maybe a stray planet slammed into Mercury, blasting away its outer layers in a deadly game of cosmic pinball. Whole worlds, on the loose, careening wildly across the cosmos, destroying anything in their path. And we're in the middle of it. Vulnerable, exposed, small. Everything is telling us to turn back. But who could defy this? The sun, in all its mesmerizing splendor. Our light, our lives. Everything we do is controlled by the sun, depends on it. It's the Greek god Helios driving his chariot across the sky. The Egyptian god Ra reborn every day. The summer solstice sun rising at Stonehenge. For millions of years, this was as close as it got to staring into the face of God. so far away. If it burned out, we wouldn't know about it for eight minutes. It's so big, you could fit one million Earths inside it. 